Hey, smart home enthusiasts, Josh here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the third video in the series that I have about building out an easy and powerful smart home. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the really powerful yet sometimes confusing world of smart home platforms. So make sure you stay tuned so you don't miss it. Choosing the right platform is the foundation to your smart home setup. So it's really important that you get it right. And I'm going to walk you through several options today so that you can make the right choice for your home. And this one, you know, you think about the platform and you might think about voice assistants and we are going to talk about voice assistants. Maybe you think about um, hubs that are not voice assistants. We'll talk about those as well. But what you really need to understand is that the smart home platform is what brings your devices together. So that's why we were trying to figure out what your devices will be and what type of protocols you want to use, because that will dictate to an extent which of the platforms you want to choose for your home. And when you're bringing all your, your items together, all your smart home devices together, something else you're going to want to do here is probably automate. And that is one of the best things about a smart home is having the smart home react to what your needs are without you having to actually do anything. So when you walk into a room, the lights turn on, or when you know maybe you leave for the day and you can start up your vacuum cleaner or something along those lines. Um, you get home, your garage door opens. When you're away, your thermostat can change or at night, you can do all kinds of different options there. So having that automation is key. And some people like to rely on the voice assistants. And I really think that's an integral part of a smart home, but it shouldn't be used by itself. You really should be looking at the automation within the hubs or the voice assistants that you choose. So let's dive right into the platforms. And we're going to start with the Amazon Alexa. And this could include, you know, the Ecos, the Eco Shows, etc. And I want to tell you about the positives and negatives. First, the positives. One is it's a pretty affordable and it's pretty user friendly. So we have a situation where it's got high compatibility of devices with other ecosystems or other brands. And it also has a pretty good uh, voice assistant. So when you ask it, you know, in natural language, it does a pretty good job. So those are some of the positives you have if you choose the Amazon Alexa brand, but there are some negatives as well. First is the privacy. Um, I don't know really what's going to happen with your data there and the security concerns. There's definitely some issues there that I think uh, have creeped up on the Amazon Alexa platform. Also, you have the situation where it's not all local control. So you are dependent on the uh, internet connection and having things work remotely through that connection. And finally, the one item that really bothers me the most is the ads and unwanted prompts that I get from the Amazon Alexa speakers. It just, I, I don't like it at all. It's annoying to me and it's intrusive. And I, I just wanted to sit there and be quiet unless I speak to it or have some type of interaction that causes it to react. The next platform I wanna tell you about is the Google Home or Google Assistant platform. And with this platform, you get that natural language, the AI and the processing that is superior to any of the others. I really like what Google does when you know, you're know you asking it to give you answers or asking it questions. I always find that Google does the best job because we have all three of the major voice assistants um, within our house and Google is the one that that I typically will go to with any of the questions I have because I just feel like it does a better job there. Also, it has a lot of uh, compatibility with devices. It's growing there on, you know, every year. So it definitely has an expanding integration library there. Finally, it integrates really well with the Google ecosystem. So if you're an Android user, this may be a great option for you with the compatibility there and the integration that you get with the platform. So what are the cons? The first two are just like Amazon Alexa, and that would be the privacy concerns and the reliance on the cloud for the integration. So you're relying on that internet connection. But the final issue that I have with the Google platform is the fact that Google is notorious for shutting down projects. So how long will it actually exist? How long will some of the integrations work? Will they, you know, abandon some of their products? So if you get, you know, go all in on their cameras or, you know, something like that, how long is that going to work? It just gives me a, a pause there as one of the cons that Google is notorious for uh, pulling the plug on things, even when consumers love the products. 
So let's get to, to the next and final voice assistant. And the final platform with the voice assistant obviously is Apple HomeKit with the Siri voice assistant. And this one is much different from the other two. First is it's in the Apple ecosystem rather than, um, you know, being Android or Android adjacent there. So if you're an Apple user, you know, that's definitely a, a strong consideration. Um, if you're an Android user, I would say this is probably not a consideration you should be making. What else is different about this? The security and privacy are top of mind and really important in this particular platform. So if you're really concerned about privacy or security, Apple HomeKit is the option for you. Plus, it is the most locally controlled out of the different options for the smart home voice assistant platforms. So if you're looking for more local control over Amazon or Google, then Apple HomeKit would be the option for you out of the voice assistants. So with these positives, what's wrong with it? So the cons for the Apple HomeKit are the limited compatibility with devices and the you know Apple ecosystem, that walled garden, if you will, that Apple likes to do and not having it play nicely with the Android or other ecosystems. And finally, the cost. That's the one that I just can't ever get over. Apple always has, you know, very limited products and those products always seem to cost a lot. So there's no real point in this um, because I, I think there's better solutions unless you're really embedded in the Apple HomeKit. Um, but I do have another curveball for you a little bit later in the video. So stick around if you are an Apple user, because I think that I have a better option for you anyway. So now the first platform outside of the major voice assistants, and that is Samsung SmartThings. I was a Samsung SmartThings user for a number of years, probably about seven years or so. And overall, it was a really good experience. One of the pros here, you get more advanced automations through Samsung SmartThings than you're gonna see through Apple or Google or Amazon. So this is just like the next level up for those. Plus you have more local control and some of the other protocols are, you know, integrated within the hub. So Zigbee, Z-Wave type protocols, you only need this hub and that's really limited in some of the voice assistants. So what are the negatives about SmartThings? First, it uses a hub and you might say, well, the other devices use a hub, you know, Apple and Amazon and Google, they all use hubs, but they're voice assistants as well. So they're like a dual purpose. So I put those in a slightly different category. This is a hub that's dedicated just to this, which is, you know, probably a better idea with automations and everything running, but still it may be a negative to some users where you have to have this little box somewhere in your house and connected to your network. Furthermore, they unnecessarily utilize the cloud. So things that could be done locally have historically still been done remotely. And that's even after a bunch of updates and them saying they're gonna do more locally. Um, in the past, that just hasn't happened. And it's a pull the rug type situation on some of the things. And the final negative I have, and again, probably the biggest negative that I have for smart things is the lack of control by the users. And that's regarding updates that they push out, um, different systems like WebCore that historically everybody could rely on. They sort of pulled that one out without really having a replacement there. There's been a lot of issues that are outside the user's control. So you're really reliant on Samsung to make those right decisions and provide the support needed and you know the interface needed to achieve what you want to do. And sometimes you could do what you wanted to do before and they change it on you and you then can't do what you wanted to do or can't do what you were doing before. So it's a bait and switch type situation in some, some instances here. And I just don't like that at all. So I have one more major platform and then I have some other information after that as well. So if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe because there will be more videos in this series and I wanna make sure your home is smarter. And the last platform I wanna talk about is Home Assistant. I mean, this is where we need like Paul Hibbert or one of those guys that wanna do some of the crazy antics about Home Assistant because it is a borderline cult in this because the community is that good. So what are the pros? A, the community is just absolutely awesome. The local control, which has Zigbee and Z-Wave available through dong dongles or other network connected devices. Um, there's definitely privacy and security that you don't get in some of the voice assistants. And finally, are the automations. This 
is the master system if you're looking to automate things. You can do just about anything you can dream up with Home Assistant, and it has a lot of compatibility too. Um, with the active community, it's allowed a lot of devices to come under the umbrella, and therefore it can integrate really well. And it can integrate with some of the voice assistants or other platforms as well, which we're gonna get to in just a minute here. So with all these, all these positives, what are the negatives? Well, just like Samsung Smart Things, it does require that separate hub. And yes, there's a voice assistant for um, Home Assistant at this point, but it's not, you know, really mature yet. So I think in the future, that'll be an option. But for right now, I'm gonna say that this is just a hub, no voice assistant here in Home Assistant at the current time. Furthermore, it is a little more complex. So you, in a few instances, would need to um, edit some YAML code. That's not the normal. The normal is that you can do everything on the UI. You know, I set everything up for my cell phone pretty easy through the app. Um, and really it's not hard for most people. And if you really get into where you need to edit YAML, the community is awesome and there's a lot of good documentation. So I think the, the biggest ones that I edited the YAML for were I wanted to set up a separate smart home security system and I didn't want to use one of the out of the boxes. So I, you know, set up my own. There are out of the box that are free on, on the web. So definitely some other options there. And the other thing I went in and edited that I can think of is the location of my house. I could make some edits on the uh, zone that I wanted to extend and uh, manipulate a little bit for where my house is for some of my automations. So those are only two things that I really need to go into the YAML um, for like setup. Once in a while in the automations, I, I uh, push a little harder and end up, you know, going into some YAML code. But for almost everything, you can really avoid the YAML code and do everything right in the UI, right in the user, user interface. And it's a pretty simple process. Um, and it, it gets simpler all the time. They've been really making a lot of good progress the last couple of years on Home Assistant to move away from this uh, geeky or tech, you know, bro type environment here that Home Assistant was traditionally thought of. Furthermore, they, they've moved away from uh, just having everybody have to, have to install it themselves, and they have had it pre-installed or systems designed for Home Assistant. So lots of good progress on that front, but I would still put this in the con category. And then there's a couple of other systems that I haven't mentioned. You're going to probably think like Hubitat and uh, Logitech, um, the Harmony Hub. So there's just a couple other things. Maybe you're thinking Lutron Hub. These, um, you know, a couple of them you, you could use as a smart home platform, but these aren't the ones I would recommend. Um, and Homey is another good example there of a smart home platform that's become relatively popular. Um, but I think there's a better choice, and I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Before I get to that great choice, I'm just going to give a quick summary of what we've talked about. So with Amazon Alexa, we have the affordable, easy to use and simple, you know, beginner type voice assistant. With Google Home and Google Assistant, we have the Android based um, setup with really powerful AI and uh, natural pro language processing going on on the Google Assistant. And then with Apple HomeKit, I would say less sophisticated voice assistant, you know, working there, but local control and security and privacy are key. And if you're in the Apple ecosystem, this is a good option for you. The non-voice assistants, we have the Samsung Smart Things that I mentioned. That's not one I would recommend, but it definitely checks a lot of the boxes and has provided, you know, a useful platform for me for a number of years there. So if you were intimidated by Home Assistant, Samsung Smart Things is an option. And finally, Home Assistant, definitely the most powerful, maybe a little bit geekier, but definitely the uh, most powerful system that we talked about today. So now it's time to get to what is my real recommendation. And my recommendation is actually get two, at least two. And that's because what I've done in my house is actually I've ran smart things. I've ran Home Assistant. Um, I have Amazon Alexa. I have Google Home. And I have uh, Apple HomeKit all running in my house or have ran. The only one that's not running currently is Samsung Smart Things. And that's because I integrated everything over into Home Assistant and have not looked back. So how would you go about pairing two of them together? 
if you're on the geekier side or not afraid to, you know, Google a couple things and figure it out if you really need to and, you know, an uh, item here or there, and you really want all of the options with the automation and all of the options with the compatibility, Home Assistant should be the choice out of the Samsung SmartThings or Home Assistant side. If you are, you know, not in Apple um, ecosystem and you're really afraid of really getting your hands dirty at all or Googling a couple things, then I'd be looking at smart things on the non voice assistant side as your platform. And over on the voice assistant side, if you're in the Apple ecosystem and you think that Siri is a pretty good voice assistant, then I would certainly go with Apple HomeKit. Or if you think security and privacy are really key, Apple HomeKit is the answer for you. If you want the most powerful out of the uh, AI and natural language processing, in my opinion, um, and you know, answering your questions and that type of thing, and you have either Android or um, Apple, either way it works great, the Google Home and Google Assistant are a great option. And that's what we've relied on the most at our house. Um, I've found them pretty cheap. Um, if affordability is really your main goal and you want the most beginner system or you have, you know, maybe an Alexa device around one or two, um, maybe Amazon Alexa is the answer for you. So how would I tier these for myself? Well, for the non voice assistant, I'd have home assistant up top by far, and then Samsung smart things as a distant second option, but still there and probably still viable for most folks. When we get over to the voice assistants, if you're in the Apple, you know, arena, and you think Siri is good enough, do the Apple HomeKit. If not, I would be going with Google and Google, like I said, is the one that we use the most in our house we probably have nine or 10 devices, including some of the home hubs with the screens that I put, you know, the uh, image of the doorbell on, you know, from the doorbell camera when the doorbells press, things like that. So I find those to work really well. Uh, Apple's got limited devices available and they do cost more. So if you're price sensitive, you're going to be looking at either Google or Amazon. And like I said, Amazon's probably the real beginner choice, but really not my favorite. I, I'd much rather have Google if I'm choosing between those two. And again, Google probably over, over Apple as well, unless I'm really concerned about the security or privacy, or I'm concerned about having all Apple devices and I want to have that ecosystem combined. I hope you enjoyed this installment of the easy and powerful smart home series where I talked about the smart home platforms to choose from, and I hope you got enough information to make your choice. So let me know in the comments section which of the platforms you prefer and um, why. So whatever you have or you're planning to, to purchase, you know, what's your preference and why in the comments section below. I'd appreciate that so I know where to guide things in the future and how to cater to you the best. So thanks for watching and make sure you uh, subscribe so you don't miss the next one.